Okay, so there's a lot of subjects right now which I feel are video worthy. Um, and I've actually, over the past 20 minutes or so, been going through my mind as to what my next video subject should be about. So I'm going to set up this one for now and the other subjects I'm sure will come up at a, a later point. Um, I want to talk about reliance on people and how we need to attain a situation where we become as independent as we possibly can. Now, this is actually one of life's most important lessons, in my opinion. And it is something that um, I have learned from a very personal perspective. I have been in situations where I felt that people have let me down. Um, and it's hurtful. It's, it's something that really does have quite an impact. Um, on a number of things, um, even confidence potentially. So gradually as I've grown up, um, I'm still a young man, obviously. So, um, you know, this is something that is a gradual, gradual process. But I think that it's one of the hardest lessons to learn. And yet it's one of the most important lessons to learn. And it relates perhaps to some of the other video subjects that I've raised, such as loneliness, um, confidence, it actually relates to all of these issues. So I'm not speaking about this from any sort of academic perspective, you know, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. I'm, I'm simply sharing some of my thoughts as I see it. And if people disagree, that's fine. Um, I feel that there is this tendency to see personal liberty as being as independent minded as possible. Now, I think it's very important, but the contention I would have about reaching this to its full extent, i.e. being completely self-reliant and completely independent minded, is that it is simply not realistic. Um, no one in the world, no matter how clever they are, no matter how practical they are, or no matter what connections they have, in fact, that would be the very point if they have connections, they have connections. But the point I'm making is um, there is actually a great deal of pride involved in this notion of self-reliance. I believe at the start of the video I said this is something that we should try to attain. But the caveat to that would be that we need to recognise that it can never be 100%. You can never be entirely 100% self-reliable, um, self-reliant, I should say, um, except in certain extreme circumstances. You know, we have the Robinson Crusoe syndrome. You know, you have people who are survivalists and so on. But the average person doesn't think like that. And the average person in our urbanized, complex world inevitably has to deal with other people. So within this sort of communication, and I'm not going to bring and encompass all of that into this one video, because I believe the subject of sociology and communication could take up a hundred videos, because it's a very complex thing. But I'm going to try and restrict this to how we rely and not rely on other people. What I would say is, like so many things, it requires a balance. In other words, we have to get to the point where we are self-confident enough not to really care about what someone else's opinion, what sort of impact that has on us, but not get to the point where we're so absorbed in our own thinking that we don't care at all what other people think, because then it leads to selfishness. Um, and it does lead, in my opinion, to being sociopathic in extreme cases. I, I do agree with the consensus that is in a lot of those self-help videos that I've referred to before, that a truly confident person doesn't need others' approval. That is true. However, the point I would argue is that in itself doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with encouraging other people or praising other people. I don't think that's insincere. When I encourage my friends, when I praise my friends, it's not because I'm trying to be liked by them. It's because I genuinely feel that 
it's something positive that can help them to do whatever it is they're doing. It's not insincere. If I have ever felt that my friends have been wrong or that they have been, you know, uh, if I disagree with them in a situation, I've always, always been very candid. One of my strongest personal tributes I feel is honesty. Um, now, of course, people could say that's also a weakness if you're, there's this perception that being very honest means you're giving too much away. I don't think it necessarily has to be that way. You can be honest whilst also being diplomatic and not necessarily ceding too much ground or too much, um, you know, not exposing yourself too much. Um, I think that this thing about relying on other people, though, to tie more, more into that line of thinking um i think it comes down to a number of things we absolutely have to be assertive now what does assertiveness mean my line of thinking is assertiveness summed up basically means knowing how to communicate in the most pragmatic way in any given situation that to me is assertiveness so it doesn't mean constantly being paranoid and thinking everyone else is the enemy and constantly being on the defensive nor does it mean being super nice and always wanting to get on with everyone just because um for the sake of it it means judging each and every situation based on the person you're communicating with because everyone's different so I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with adapting your approach to different people if you know that who that person is. However, what you have to be careful about, what we should say, I don't want to sound like I'm pontificating here, what we need to be careful about is never ever ceding our own values. I can honestly say I do talk to different people in slightly different ways because I know their character. And it's not that I'm adapting my own personality. It's that my own personality is naturally adaptable from my perspective. Um, there is another side to this, though, um, and another aspect to look at, and that is confrontation. Most people don't particularly enjoy confrontation, and they will try to avoid confrontation. But by the same token, most people don't like to feel that they are being walked over by the other person. So most of the time when people criticise others, I'm talking here on a personal basis, I'm not talking about the stranger aspect because I'll get into that in a second. But for example, when friends argue um, or family members argue, etc. When, when you get into an argument with someone you know, I think more often it's based on defensiveness rather than offence. Because the chances are if you're arguing with a friend, you don't really want to hurt them. Um, I'm speaking here from experience, you don't want to hurt the other person. You just want to preserve yourself. And actually, those sort of situations can have a lot, a much, much bigger impact than an argument with a stranger. The videos online about not caring what other people think, one aspect that they didn't necessarily touch on is the difference between what a stranger thinks and what someone you really care about thinks. Because, you know, I can see a negative comment on one of my videos and it might briefly bug me and I might feel the need to reply to that person but it sure as hell won't take up a big portion of my day thinking about it you know it'll be over in a minute I'll make a retort and that's it but if I have a misunderstanding with a close friend honestly speaking it will dominate my mind for quite a long time because I will be absolutely determined to fix the situation, not to go and pander to the person and say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, all, I'm completely wrong, because that would be giving away too much. But it is about being assertive in those situations. So I know I'm bringing a lot into this video, but I think it's all relevant and I think it can all be interconnected. Um, and, you know, with this kind of germinates more thinking, that's a good thing. So maybe people can, you know, attach more opinions to some of the things I've raised to sort of spread some of these ideas out a bit. That's great. 
And of course, I'm being influenced by others as well. I think as human beings, we are inevitably influenced by others. No one can honestly say that they are absolutely not influenced by other human beings. That is absolutely not sensible. It's just not common common sense. It's not reality. Because the only way you can't be influenced by other human beings if you really are a hermit, the Robinson Crusoe syndrome. Um, so the point I'm making is from the most shy, insecure, nervous, anxious ridden person to the most proud, confident, hell, let's say an egotistical person, everyone in this spectrum is still influenced for good or bad by other people. So to get back to the initial title of this video about being independent minded and so on, I think this is not something that can be learned overnight. I think this is something that is really a gradual process. Now I'm trying to develop in my own life a situation where I I think this. One of my sort of um, shortcomings is that I do overthink things. Now some people might say, well Nathan, you're, you're exposing yourself a bit in these videos. I don't actually feel that is a weakness. Because I feel that the things I'm saying a lot of other people can relate to anyway. So I don't sort of think, oh, I'm exposing my weaknesses here. Because no one is perfect. So I'm simply being honest about some of my shortcomings. It's not a case of saying, please help me, feel sorry for me, I'm weak. It's more a case of saying, yeah, this is a shortcoming, I recognise it. And maybe other people out there can relate to that one. I also have my strengths. One of my strengths would be that I'm very reflective about things. Um, and reflection can be good because it means that you're not just opening in your mouth without thinking. So that, in my opinion, can be a good thing. Um, but in, in order to, getting back to this point about self-reliance, to me that is not about constantly having the state of pride where you never need help from other people. I don't agree with that, either as a personal principle or as a social principle either. Um, and, you know, without making this video too much about the issue, if we look at issues like the welfare state and so on, there's a huge amount of, uh, dare I say it, stigma about this notion of claiming money from the state. Um, and a lot of people, I do get frustrated with those who say things like, I'm a hardworking taxpayer and you know, there's a lot of pride involved, really, because, and I don't want to politicize this video too much, but at some point, at some point in all our lives, and I really, really challenge anyone to deny this, at some point in everyone's life, they do need help from someone else. Some people more than others, but generally speaking, everybody on some level at some point in their life will require assistance or help from others. And you can even see this um, in terms of, you know, people in powerful positions, you know, prime ministers, presidents, they still have their advisors. They still need to have some sort of gauge of public opinion. Even they need help. They can't do everything themselves. They need to consult their cabinet. Um, CEOs of big companies need to have some sort of notion of what's going on in the workforce, what sort of, what the profit performance is and so on. In order to do that, they need advisors. Um, so everybody pretty much relies on others to some extent. Um, obviously, the world is not a fair place and there is injustice out there. There are people who work tirelessly and get a pittance for it. There are people who, ex who are exploited. And disgracefully, we live in a world where there are still literally millions of slaves. Um, so there is not a moral equilibrium with this. But for those of us who do have relative freedom, i.e. freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, then we need to look at how we deal with general interaction in every situation. The fact is, we can never ever get to a point where we can always have things our own way. 
And I think we need to grow up a little bit and just accept this. And again, I, I'm being really careful here not to pontificate, but I think we need to get to a point where we recognize the human communication is, it is complex, but that doesn't mean that how we deal with it has to be complex. It goes without saying we need to be comfortable on ourselves. But you can't have a situation where resentment builds up if you feel that you've constantly been walked over and if people have constantly let you down. Now, there are situations whereby we do need help from others. And there are situations when we have a right, a basic human understanding of being aggrieved when someone else has let us down. So I think in those situations, it's okay to be, well, to put bluntly pissed off. Say, for example, you organise a social event. Someone says, yeah, sure, I'll be there at 2pm. And then they just forget. And they don't even have the decency to apologise. Um, now, I defy anyone to say that they can rise above that and not care. I defy anyone to honestly say that. Um, so there are certain circumstances where... Just giving yourself a break and saying, yeah, I have a right to be pissed off about that situation because that person has been thoughtless. They have, you know, put me out of my way. But where the self-reliance factor comes in is sort of having a little bit of cynicism. You know, cynicism in its extreme form is not a good thing, but a small amount of cynicism can be quite practical. In other words, don't trust anyone absolutely 100 percent perhaps this is outside the remit of intimate relationships i'm not going to talk too much about that but maybe don't trust anyone 100 percent i think that you can get to a situation where you trust close friends and you know for example that you can rely on them if if you have a problem and you want to talk about it and just about that point i don't think there's anything weak or pathetic about discussing your problems. I really, really don't think there is. And I think too many people kind of have this notion that we need to bottle our problems up. Now, obviously, there is a difference between talking about your problem and constantly, constantly, constantly complaining about your life because that actually weighs other people down. Nobody likes to hear someone who's constantly miserable and constantly talking about, you know, no matter how sympathetic we think we are, how benevolent we think we are at some point. Most people don't like to constantly hear that. But by the same token, most people like to think that if they have a problem, if they're upset about something, they can rely on friends to hear them out and to be at least somewhat sympathetic. And being sympathetic doesn't necessarily mean sort of treating someone like a child, but with the advice thing, you know, I think advice is, uh, I think advice can be good, but people also need to be aware that it is just advice and others are not obliged to take that advice. And they shouldn't feel resentful if someone doesn't take the advice. Basically, this can all be summarized by the word balance. So we need to get to a point where we are confident in ourselves, where we trust people that we also recognize that people have shortcomings. So people will let us down in life. They will have their off periods where they're in a bad mood for whatever reason, and inadvertently they might take it out on, on yourself. And I think that gradually learning this is a challenge. It takes time because none of us are omniscient. If that's the right word, it's either omnipotent or omniscient. Frankly, I've forgotten right now. But none of us are all knowing. None of us are all knowing. So we have to just deal with our own confidence. It goes without saying that if you're insecure in yourself, that's going to make communications with other people very difficult. Now I'm someone who's when my confidence levels go up and down. I'd be lying if I said it was always consistent. But I make these videos at this time when my life is far from ideal because I want to talk about this as it is, as I experience it. 
and I'm going to round it up here. I hadn't quite intended to talk this long, but I'm sure there'll be many other videos I make related to subjects that I've raised in this video. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, apologies that it hasn't quite been a coherent video. You know, I've talked about a lot of different things. Probably haven't connected it very well, but I think it's all interrelated anyway. And um, yes, uh, do let me know your thoughts. Thank you.